All right, we're back. It's the Flow Truck Podcast. Happy Monday, everyone. I'm Kevin. He is Gordon. Didn't have a Friday show. Those of you who are loyal listeners, I'm sure, noticed that. We praised Colt's preparedness yes. on Wednesday's show. He had the backup battery ready to go. He did not have backup internet ready to go. So with all the extreme weather in the Austin area, his internet got knocked offline. Like who doesn't have two lines of internet in their homes? I mean, it's 2023. You're supposed to have at least four yeah. different versions of internet. You have your Google yeah. Chrome, yeah. Your Google Fiber, Fiber yeah, yeah. AT&T, Verizon, at least three. Yeah. Those are the big three. Well, and you have to run it off the generators too yes. because you got no power. So we didn't have it. We didn't have a show. Unfortunately, didn't get a chance to do over-unders. I simulated them though, giving our picks, what I know about us. I went 4-0. Last weekend, so we you would not have gone for no because you would have got the Sydney one wrong. So I had the line at. Did you see what I put it at? No, I didn't look at your lines. I should have. So I only had a couple of them. I thought I you would have got the Sydney one wrong. So I had winning men's sixty time at six five zero. Pretty good line, by the way. Sydney, I had seven three zero as the over under, which was a fun over under to set. That That's what makes over unders fun. Yeah. She literally never run the event. Seven three zero. She won seven thirty three. So I, think we'll we bo- I think we both would have took the under. No, I would have gone over, which is why I gave myself a, an extra point. Well, you didn't go 4-0. You went 0-0. Oh 0-0. No. <laughs> oh no. You went 0-0. Oh no. Nonetheless, um, made it to Monday. Don't anticipate any sort of issues with our internet or power going forward. Although there's still a lot of people in Austin still without power. Really? Which, yeah. Yeah. Which is You terrible. know what's funny? Um, you, we had the, like, the big freeze two years ago. Yeah. Uh, my apartment had power the entire time. But yeah. the house that I live in now, it had no power, flooded, and was awful. Now, I mm. moved two years later. The place where I'm at, which ha- ha- lost all power yeah. two years ago, was perfectly fine the entire time. But my apartment from two years ago lost, lost power. Jeez. So, like, I basically am really good at dodging <laughs> the locations that lose the power. <laughs> Man, there were so many trees down. It was crazy. Some of the neighborhoods are like, Tornadoes had gone through. It was nuts. Like our neighborhood, like there was a tree on a house. It was bad. It was wow. bad, bad. Yeah, yeah. People and and just being at your house for a whole week. I knew a lot of people went into hotels, right? Had to stay in a hotel with their family for a bunch of days just because the power never came back on. So I had a good weekend outside of <laughs> the weather. Back to you. Yeah, back to me. Yeah. Speaking of having good internet, my home apparently has great internet because a podcast that I listen to, the Rights to Ricky Sanchez podcast, a Sixers breakdown analysis fun cult following podcast mm. they did their podcast from my house because i had good internet wouldn't you love to have your you favorite are podcast so proud of your internet i mean <laughs> you are so proud it's of your... it's it's one of my like it's one of my good qualities about myself it's, it's like I my have personality yeah. i have great internet um no but like imagine your favorite podcast yeah being recorded from your kitchen table yeah it, the greatest thing ever it was a huge moment for you it was i watched the clip that you sent me they were tolerant of you, which was cool. They were a little weirded out. And it turns out there are people who listen to, to the Rights of Ricky Sanchez who also listen to the Flow Check podcast. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, the crossover they never thought they would see happen. Well, so. they're going to get a huge bump in downloads because of this. Oh, yeah. They, they think they were doing the solid by mentioning the oh, show. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me, let me look it up here. What's it called again? No. It goes the other direction. Go subscribe to the Rights of Ricky Sanchez podcast YouTube channel. International- trying to get to 10K. I mean, we have international yeah. listeners here. I don't know how international. Any Cameroon getting mad about Cameroonian the track fans? Oh, for Embiid. For Embiid. Yeah, but so I'm saying there's a limit when you talk about Sixers basketball. Yeah, I know NBA is a worldwide game, but track's more of a worldwide sport. So yeah. I'm happy for you, man. I don't know. It Bucket felt, list item. It felt good having your yeah. po- your your favorite podcast in your own home. So it makes me think maybe we should do our podcast. In somebody somebody else's house and make house. their dream come true. Make their dream I don't come true. think it would be received as well. What do you mean? I don't think you would be as welcomed as what's the guy? What was his name? Spike. Spike. Askin. Spike. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people like him. Yeah. He's a huge, and people like you, but it might be a little bit more limited. I don't know. Okay. You could try it. Go to Budapest. Go to Budapest and say, "Hey, internet bad in the hotel." Even if your internet's great in the hotel, just, just it. say it's bad, just to see if you get any offers. We'll make it happen. All right. Other than that. Track and field went off without went a hitch. Off without a hitch. There was internet at all the track and it field meets. It was cold meets. in Boston, though. It was I cold in Boston, that. but we had phenomenal performances. And I think we got to start with New Balance Grand Prix. Uh, start with the race. 
that of the meet, I think, because it had two notable runners, world champion Noah Lyles, world Olympic medal, world and Olympic medalist. That's Trayvon one little. Yeah, you mm -hmm. got third. Mm -hmm. yeah. Olympic medalist Trayvon Bromel. Bromel the hundred guy. Noah Lyles trying to become a hundred guy, and. This is a big win. This is very impressive, in my opinion. Noah Lyles edging out Trayvon Bromel to the hundredth of a second. What was the exact? Um, 6.507 to 6.509. Yeah, 6.507, 6.509. I did not see this coming. You're big on the train of Lyles can pull off the 1-2. I'm not so big on that train because I think Bromel, Curley, Bracey, who, who, Jacobs will eventually... Yeah. Be the ones that are going to dominate the 100. But, I mean, Bromel's even a good 60 guy, too. You remember yeah. what he did? He won the world title in 2016. Now, it is um, it is still early February, and I'm sure Bromel isn't thinking, hey, I need to be at the best of my ability in February. I need yeah. to be best in August. But still, a win is a win, and Noah Lyles beating Bromel, he's not beating just a random 6-5 guy. He's right. beating one of the best in the world. One of the best in the world. Yeah. So. I thought this was a big stock going up for Lyles in the pursuit of a 1-2 double. What are your thoughts? I thought it was about as big of a result as you could get yeah. in the very beginning of February. I am on the 1-2 double train for Lyles. Made it the bold prediction, but it was bold for a reason, right? Because I think he can do it, but there's obviously an outside chance. Now, you can do all this math. Hey, he PR'd. If he continues to PR, or like, what's this going to mean for the 100? And then what's that going to mean for the 200? But I also want to be cautious, not get ahead of myself. The thing I liked about this race, though, Gordon, was after the race. Explain. Lyles was fired up. Okay. Lyles was yelling. He said, this is my track. He was pumped. He thought this meant something. Bromel, That's his track? We said, this is my track. He, he, he's, he's the owner of the new Boston track in New Balance. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> he took it over from a, I don't know the Adidas it, athlete. Yeah. Is taking over the New Balance track. And Bromel, cared I guess it makes too. sense. Bromel is a New Balance athlete, so it is. Bromel cared though too. He didn't go and do a mix zone interview where he's like, "No, it's all good." Like just practicing. Him, let's move on. No, he was like, he said he was disappointed. Yeah. He he said he was disappointed, needed to work on things, and he's gonna come back. Like. This meant something, and I like that for a early February race. It's good for this event. It's good for both those gentlemen that they're putting themselves in high pressure situations early on. Again, I'm in, you know, as incentivized as anybody to say, all right, well, this is going to be 9 7 now. And if it's 9 7, then he's in the mix. But I also just want to pump the brakes a little bit and say this is still. Such early days. Bromel was debuting too. I think that matters. I think there's a difference between your first race and your second race during the indoor season. Especially. What's the difference? I just well, we saw Lyles' first race. Lyles' first race in the 60, he lost to Kendall Williams and Josephus Lyles. Now Josephus got DQ'd in this race. Maybe he would have been out there and popped a, a 651 as well too. But then you go and you beat a former 60 meter champion. <laughs> so I think there is a big difference in just race sharpness when you get your second one. But, but, but. But nothing but positives for Lyles from this. Yeah, and look at the way the race played out. Bromel had the jump on him. He had the better start, which makes sense. He was still leading through 50 meters, and then it was in that final 10 where Lyles was able to sneak by him by running .02 faster yeah. in the final 10 meters. But hey, man, they were, there was an interview with Lance Brahman, uh, Nor Lyles' coach, talking about, you know, you're talking about one, two, double. Yeah. And if he wants to do one two double, he needs to be in nine seven shape. But I think if he's in nine seven shape, I don't think that's about him winning the hundred. I think being in nine seven shape, like Brahman said in an interview, is that's about him being in two hundred meter world record shape. I heard that too. Let me just remind you that Usain Bolt was in nine five eight shape when he ran nineteen nineteen. But then I mean you could go back yeah, but, and say last well then you can go back and say, yeah, last year Niles ran nineteen thirty one and he was in nine nine shape. But see here's the thing. He wasn't in nine nine shape. He just didn't run the hundred at world championships. If he was Ooh. in faster than nine nine oh, okay. shape. Okay, so last what, year. what would Noah Lyles have ran the hundred in last year? Comfortably in the nine eights. Comfortably. Comfort comfortably in the nine eights. Comfortably in the top three? But we never know in that race? At USA's or Worlds? At Worlds. 
Would Lyles have finished top three at Worlds? That was a weird if, final. Probably not. Okay. But here's the thing. That's the problem we get into when we try to reverse engineer these races yeah. and make it a math equation. And, oh, I'm three one hundreds faster than I was last year. That means I'm going to be at this point. This Again, I'll take all the evidence that I'm going to be right because I like being right. But I just think we need to have a little bit of caution here because yeah. there are 40 meters still in the race. I know everything pretends to the shorter the race, the more Lyles is going to struggle. So if he's winning 60s, it's nothing but uh, blue skies ahead. Yeah. But it is an indoor 60. I mean, but, I, and here's the thing. Next week, or this week coming up, he races Christian Coleman. USA is in two weeks. If he decides to do it, Romel will be there and perhaps Coleman again too. So there's a competition side of this too that's, that's even separate from the times. I don't know. If Lyles goes out indoors having a 9-4, I mean, not, uh, nine four, a 6-4 on his new PB of the 60, that's a gonna be a really good 2023 which is gonna make my kenny b beating him in a 200 even much even more of a spectacular sure. prediction be just be even bolder right? I'm even bolder <laughs> my boldness is just blowing up with my yeah. kenny b prediction i just think when you distill it down to that many you know a hundredth here a hundredth there i i understand and you want to look for signs and, and trends but we also didn't get a good read on how fast Lyles was in the hundred yeah at the time he ran the 1931. Whereas if you're comparing it to Bolt, we knew pretty much what shape he was in in the 100 and the 200 because he ran it a couple days apart on the exact same track. Yeah, your early season prediction is looking good right now. I, mean, it, I thought it wasn't looking good after that Gainesville race. I'm not going to lie. I was like, ooh, Kevin, well, you wanted you're to read one, so much two. one. Ain't looking too good right now. So what would you say right now? His What percent chance do you have of him making the 100 team? Right making now? the 100 team? Yeah, just making the 100 team. Is it above 50 for you now? Because I'm assuming he has, a, he has to beat below. one of Bracey, Bromel, and Coleman, right? Because Curly's, Curly's in. Yeah. So he has yeah. to beat one of Bracey. But it's not just them. Bromel, it could be Coleman. Mikai Williams. Yeah, but like that's like the guys right now. Yeah. Oh, greater than 50%? Uh, No, it's still less than 50%. Bracey did pull out of this race. Yeah. We don't know why. Right. I'm guessing he's probably like not sharp and he probably would have ran like, you know, 6 six zero and didn't want to. 6 0. Oh, six six zero. Yeah. Oh, that shit six zero. No, no. He should have run it if he was in six zero shape. That'd, That'd been be a good fun. idea. That would've been good. Imagine running six zero in sixty meters. It's like exactly one second per ten meters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you have him uh, below fifty still. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I had him at like ten percent. He's now at like thirty nine percent. Okay. Thirty nine percent. What's more impressive for you, the time, or beating Bromel? Beating Bromel. But also the time is good. <laughs> and also the win. That's also good. It's all good. All right. Second most important race? Sure. Grant Holloway wins again. He makes Not- seven threes boring. Well, the margin of victory was smaller than I thought, especially because Cunningham wasn't up there. Roberts ran him pretty well. I mean, 738 to 746. He didn't have like that gigantic lead after two hurdles that we've gotten used to seeing and sort of laughed at in the replays over and over again. That's always a fun thing. When a Grant Holiday race comes out, you pause it like one second in and you're like, wait a minute. Is that a false start? <laughs> yeah. Are these guys all, all in the same race? But it was more just, all right, Cunningham hasn't gotten going yet because he had such a good year. Last year you expected him to be closer, but Holloway hasn't lost this race since high school. Still. Still. He hasn't lost this race since high school. To Cunningham, yeah. What have you done perfect since high school? Nothing. Not a single thing. That's what makes it so impressive. Nothing? No. I didn't start podcasting until way after high school. It's got to be something I've done perfect since high school. I feel like I've never... I've never lost a game of tic-tac-toe since high school. <laughs> Undefeated. Have never you lost. raced? Have you competed as much as Holloway has, though? I've played tic-tac-toe at least... As many times as Holloway has run 60 hurdles. Yeah. For sure. And I'm undefeated. So I'm basically the, said, Grant, see, I'm the Grant Holloway of tic-tac-toe. But you've tied. I have tied. Grant many times. Grant hasn't tied. Well, Winners win. You got to get the dub out there. Well, tie means you just play again until you win. So tie <laughs> is just like redo. And I've always, whenever we redo I win. <laughs> so it's a, it's a race off. All right. Tic-tac-toe off. Can you 
talk about this race at all? Do you have any thoughts? Or I that... mean, that's my analysis of okay. it is that Grant Holloway makes seven threes boring. He's so much better than everyone else. He's going to probably be undefeated. There's not a world title for him to win indoors. So mm. we're kind of just getting a little bit of just like Grant Holloway cameos of indoor track and field because there's no pressure. It's just kind of like. You know, there's pressure. I think there's more pressure. No. Nah. He's so much better, pretty though. Pretty much anybody else. He's so much better. But he has something on the line. There's nothing on the line. The streak? The streak isn't on the line. The streak is cool. The streak's not on the, the line. The streak is literally on the line. When no, you it's step not. on the starting line, the gun goes off. That You are literally and figuratively putting it on the line at that point. What do you mean? But he's not actually putting it on the line because he's not racing anyone that can beat him. He's racing everybody. There just doesn't exist a person who can beat him exactly. right now. He's not ducking anybody. Ex I know. I'm not saying he's ducking I'm anybody. I'm saying he's not racing anyone that can beat him because couple, there's no one who can beat I him. I know, but that's, you're still putting your streak. He could just chill. He could run one race and just be done. Yeah, Roberts, but Roberts was what eight one hundreds back. It's pretty close. Cunningham is probably going to get in shape by the time we get to USA's. You don't know who he's not going to lose. I know he's not going to lose, but he's still putting it on the line. I disagree with the way you characterize that. All right, let's go to the women's sixty. All right, there's two women right now in the world who are above everybody else. I disagree with there's that. There's a clear top two. It's Aaliyah Hobbs and it's Julian Alfred. Now we'll get to Julian Alfred in a second. But Aaliyah Hobbs, man, she just dominated disagree, this race. This. All right, who else is in there? Shelly and Fraser Price. Who is running the 60 right now? Yes, I'm not including people who aren't running it. Of course she would be in there. Yes. Exactly. So that's more than two. Okay. Again, once again, you step on my just great intro to a cool <laughs> segment. Women's 60. Women's 60. Yeah, this was good. I mean, Briscoe's a really good 60-meter runner. Uh, she beat her. By 0.08. She runs 7.02. We've seen her run sub 7 this year already. We get Alfred running low 7s over and over and over again. In a perfect world, we'd have these two face off against each other. But Hobbs said she's healthy during the offseason, which is helping her out a bunch now. And she just looks to be in a real good, real good spot, like in control the entire way. Yeah. I mean, 7.02 after running 6.98 a week ago. Showing that she can be consistent in the low sevens, showing that the six ninety eight isn't a flash in the pan, that she's able to come back, run well in a more high pressure situation. Um, we'll see. What is the American record in the sixty? Mm, six ninety five, isn't it, Gail Devers? So I'd imagine that's probably on her mind because that's what I hope you so. kind of have to chase. You run six ninety eight. You want to come back, run seven oh two. You think, all right, we're going to altitude yep. for. Uh, U.S. indoors, maybe that's my shot to potentially be the U.S. record. Yeah. And Albuquerque is going to play host to back-to-back -back big meets with USA's and NCAA's. And both those meets are going to have a 60-meter superstar in them who can get into the top five, maybe even challenge number one spot. But we'll see. Is there anyone else besides Shelly Ann that we would want to see? Well, we saw Lane Thompson hurrah run – at Carson Warholm's meet, but that track seemed kind of strange. How fast did she run? Was it 740? Or a, she went 740? Six, seven, not 740. Um, what did she? Ah, what is That's it? slow. No, no, where She's is not it? even the top. She never run sub 720. Seven, no. She probably ran in the 720s. Someone in the chat. Let me. I can't. I can't find it right now. It's hard to find. the The, the track looked. I mean, I don't think it was. A fast track. So obviously, Ilya Hobbs showing her consistency. Thinks she can break the American record potentially. But Nico, if you could bring up um, the first round of the women's sixty, I think this is where kind of what we thought was going to be potentially the marquee of the race. I mean, we knew Sydney McLaughlin wasn't going to win this race, but Sydney McLaughlin and Sharika Jackson were both in this race. Neither made the final. What are your thoughts on Sydney's seven thirty three? And more importantly, Sharika Jackson's 734. I was very surprised about Sharika. So Thompson Ara was 730. Thanks, everybody, okay. in the chat. It was 730. Um, my thoughts, I thought Sydney would have been, like, th it would have been amazing if she got into the final yeah. in this race. Like, you can't expect somebody who's good at one event, like three events away, to automatically be good at something else. She doesn't run this event. She doesn't train for this event. And there's real short sprint special these are all short sprint specialists basically save for a couple besides a for her. long sprint hurdler 
to say that she was going to top get top three win or anything like that is just you're not paying attention to track and field at all if that's what you've you been thought. like following the sport for less than a decade you've been following it for a couple of years just a couple years you know not her, a whole decade you know her name but you don't know, know anything else yeah like i knew hobbs is gonna run low sevens you know briscoe white barnes like these are top flight run. i mean melissa jefferson right won the ncw title yeah. in in the 60s 60s different event from the foreign and the foreign hurdles jackson surprised me yeah what what was that i just think she was just there to she reminds me of um, say hi to kiss the babies. Yeah, uh, Fraser hip. Price had that one at pre classic a couple of years ago where she ran like eleven two, and everyone's like, "Wait, what happened?" And then like two weeks later, yeah. she's just setting the track on fire. I mean, that's so. kind of like Lane Thompson Raw running seven three zero, Sharika Jackson running seven thirty four. They're kind of on the same little. Yeah, except I think the track... indoor track is cool and all, but that's a U.S. thing. Us Jamaicans were saving it for. When it counts outdoors. Thompson Raw won, though. A little bit different, and the track was different. This track seems... Right, you've been out there, right? I've been out there before it was a track. Though. Okay, never mind then. I The word is it's fast, so I think it's at least quicker. It's not as fast as the other one in Boston. Okay. Well, nothing is. There's literally... <laughs> there's no surface on Earth other than the roads in Valencia that are faster than the Boston track. But so, I thought Sharika would have ran like fast. I thought she could, could win the race. She, oh, I did too. If we had predictions on Friday, I would have said she could win. But that's the thing. You don't have no idea what, what sort of – What she was of, doing. She was there just to hang out. She's what sort of going to Dunkin' learn. Donuts, grab a cup of coffee. Yeah. I mean, the thing is – Celtics game. Some, rate, some athletes are so good that when they run like that, it's just like, all right, you're like, they didn't go all out. <laughs> it's not, oh, what did they do wrong? It's like, no, it just wasn't wasn't a priority for them. S- Sydney, though, I mean, only 100th off making the final. Like, if she made the final, that would have been pretty impressive. Like, pretty surprising. I mean – I don't making a final in this rate, rate me is all dependent on who's in the race. Yeah, but look at yeah. I mean, I never I'm even, looking at the people who I never racing. even heard of I mean, you yelled that of the person who was eighth. Anthony you heard of Strahan? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, what 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 where is she from? She Bahamas. She runs well, longer. Bah- she's better than the her main events the two, oh, okay. if I'm not mistaken. But even like Sorry, I never heard of you. But, but even, I will now. But even um someone like Kenny Harrison you're like, all right, she's a short, yeah. short hurdler. Uh, Javen Oliver's won a U.S. title in the 60, I think, like made teams. But again, yeah, yeah. you don't know what part of the season people are at. A lot of athletes, this was their one, one and done appearance, or they're gonna go here and then they're gonna go to Milrose. So, um, so those are your top four. Oh, there's another one. What's the fourth thing? A fourth thing for on the rundown for this meet. Oh. Yeah, I want to talk about some of the distance stuff or the mid distance stuff. Oh, um, wait for this. We'll talk about Kincaid first. Yeah, the Woody Kincaid uh, 3K, you just see it coming a mile away, <laughs> right? When those five laps to go and you're just sitting in the pack, four laps to go. Now, are we all looking at it through the perspective of this guy just broke the American record? Yes, 100%. And if he hadn't just broke the American record, like if he didn't run last week, we probably would have thought he's the favorite. But then if he didn't kick to win, we would have said, ah, rusty. But we know he's in yeah. amazing shape, and we know he can kick because he closed in 26 uh, in Boston. But this field isn't this field, like uh, an elite international field. Exactly, and that's why you knew, hey, he's going to go, and he's going to go hard. So then he went with, with 200 to go. What did he end up? What was this? 740. No, but what is his last 200? It was. It looked fast on TV. I don't know how fast it was, or on the internet, wherever I watched it. Splits, 200 meter splits, 2579. So he closed faster than he did because he was going basically. It's 740. Yeah, it's not fast. Yeah. yeah, for him it's not fast. But Christian Noble second, James West third. Uh, men's mile, Gorley and Tanner, kind of fun photo finish there. Women's eight, again, Ajay Wilson figures out a way to get it done. She's got an impressive indoor record as well, too. 20.45. She left it kind of late. So with... Uh, Women's 800, Nico. Women, oh, sorry. Didn't know we weren't there yet. Um, with a lap to go, she was second to Kayla Edwards. And nobody was doubting Wilson because if you're paying attention, <laughs> you're just you're not going to think Audrey Wilson's ever going to lose. But I mean, I pay attention and I think she's going to lose. Oh, I never think she's going to lose. Indoors, she could she could switch events, and I would pick her to win. She could run the sixty, and at, especially at the armor. If she races and, a thing, Mo at USA's, what do you think she's going to lose? Yeah, like I have this thing in my head where she, uh, USA's is in Albuquerque. If she's running at the armory, I just don't think she's going to okay. lose. It's just impossible for her to lose. Uh, I hope she runs against. She's running against her at Milrose in the six. You think she's going to lose? 
That one, it's a, it's a 600, so I can weasel out of that one and say, I think I think, I think I was going to Okay, win. it has to be over 601 meters. Well, she won that 1,000, too. I just, yeah, this was not an ideal, like, first three <laughs> laps, I don't think, for her. I think she would have liked to have been in control with the bell, and she still got around and got it done. She just, uh, she's perfect for indoors because she doesn't panic. Yeah. She doesn't make a lot of sudden movements that put herself out of position. Anything else from this meet that you found interesting? I mean, Mario Gunner, Mariano Garcia, what, indoors. The guy who rushes it indoors. Won the eight. One forty-five twenty-six. We're monitoring <coughs> the eight. I'm dying. Sorry. Have it. Have your. I'm gonna drink this Coca-Cola. Drink. You think it's gonna be a big comeback year for the eight, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is so, the year of the eight. So do you think this helps or hurts that argument? This hurts the okay. argument. <laughs> hurts it dramatically, but I don't think the eight hundred hinges on indoor performances so i'm just this is a hear no evil see no evil speak no evil you're when getting into dar- dangerous territory when you start doing some sayings yeah that's i never what know what they're gonna i end. just i'm bird boxing the men's 800 indoors until outdoors 145 low though it's not i mean it's good but like i'm still gonna ignore it i'm gonna ignore it I was, it's kind of nice seeing isaiah jewett run well we haven't seen him since you know in the olympics Season, so. so he could be a wild card because if you're looking at this men's 800 and you're thinking, man, it's just right for the taking, yeah. right? Anybody can have it. Why not do it? A couple of years Why ago. Why not do it? Well, he was awesome a couple of years ago and then had the unfortunate tangle with Amos in that race. Like He's young still. I'm waiting for Isaiah to just be in a Nike ad and it's just, just do it. So you have, <laughs> he's training with is Benjamin it, and Norman. Right there? Yeah. Okay. It, it rhymes with do it. I got gotcha. you. He's training with Norman and Benjamin. The USC, like, got a lot of stability in the coaching situation. Yeah, it's a good he's, race. He's still, he's still young. Like, he could be a guy who, uh, you're right, we kind of. It's just 800. Is, running an 800 indoors is, like, the stupidest thing you can do to your body. 800 in the 400. It's so dumb. It's like, and the 200. No, I think about it. <laughs> Keep going. Basically, the 200 to the 800, you should not run indoors. Everything Wait, else. Don't is... say that. We're having a good 600. No, no, up. no, no, no. It's, it's, I'm, I love it. I love watching the races and I don't want them to stop it. But, like, at the end of the day, you're never going to run your, your true potential in a 200 indoors. You're never going to run your true potential no, right. in no a 400 one. and 800 indoors. Nobody, but nobody thinks that. I know nobody thinks that. So that's why when you see these races, you're kind of like, oh, you know, positioning. Is that the other thing? I, I was just wondering what you think about the 800 since it's your favorite event. That's all I mean, I'm, wait, ask me April 1st, 2023, and I'll tell you what I think about the 800. Other winners, Gabby Thomas won, Devin Charlton, women's three, Laura Muir dominated. Like That's a very misleading less than one second victory. Like She was up there. She was cruising. Uh, men's quarter, that was exciting. Fin- Noah Williams went by on the inside. Does three-man finish there between him and Dream Richards. With Vernon Norwood there as well. Richards looked like he went out because Norwood was on the outside to, to move out. And then Williams came by on the inside. And last. Oh. Wait, no, no. Wait, no, no go no, ahead, no. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I know where you're going with it. No, you know. No, well, well one, one more. And then we'll talk about it. One, the mi- Women's Mile. Go ahead. 423. That was a good race. Who won it? Heather McLean. Okay, good. What do you mean good? It was like a test? No, no, good. Like, I, yeah, I wanted to see if you knew it. <laughs> 423, world lead. But being Lucia uh, Stafford just coming off that 1K run. Yeah. Right? So 423, looking good for McLean. I mean, who do you, that women's 15, I think, is also another kind of wide open. Team oh, in to the make. U.S. In the U.S. Oh, that's talking about in the world. No, not in the said, world. In the U.S. Have you not learned? No, I know. From Faith Kipiega. No, not in the. No, in the. Looking against her. In the U.S. Uh, but we just talked about all the races, and then there was a world record at this meet, and that's the last thing we're going to talk about. Well, it's in the 500. Exactly. So women's 500, Nico. That's not that's not a problem. Like you, there's a reason they ran it first. <laughs> Even though it was a world, maybe they wanted to start with a world record to give everybody time to upload their videos and write their articles. So I actually looked at these, at the marks going in, and what she could do, like relative to the all-time list. Now, 500 is barely ever run. In fact, much of the all-time list is a road 500. There's a record road 500 okay. and, a, and a track 500. But 65 63 for Femke Bull is, is still pretty fast. Like, if you look at her uh, splits, like, you know, her, her quarter split and everything like that, 
I don't remember what they said on the broadcast, but it was it was pretty solid. Um, and then she obviously ran another hundred meters. So you'd think a four minute hurdler would be good at this, right? Take the hurdles away, add a hundred meters, extends their range a little bit. But I don't. Yeah, what are you going to take from this? I don't know idea. What would a Sydney have ran? I think she'd go under 65, nice. but that's just a guess. I just love how whenever we talk about Femke Bowl, I'm going to be like, what would Sydney have done? <laughs> I'm going to have a WWSD wristband whenever we talk about Femke Bowl. Yeah. Like, what would Sydney have done? Yeah, I think, and that's unfortunate for it her. It is, because Femke is, if Sydney was never born, Femke would be the talk of the town. And maybe if Sydney does do the quarter this year, then she becomes the talk of the town. Then she has the stage more to herself. Although yes. I think it's going to be tough this year because you got it's always the whole event's hard. Yeah, she'd be the favorite, but the whole event is hard. But I, Sydney gave an interview after, said it's like all on the table, which you get excited about that, but then you're like, well, what does that actually mean? We don't actually know, right? We're never not we're never going to know. It's very like Greg Popovich post game, like, oh yeah, we'll just. But the hey, work work talk, hard. Talk about the greatest coach of all time. There, be careful. Um, yeah, it's very. I could read this two different ways. Everything's on the table. That's awesome. She run the eight hundred. Like, what's going on? But it also means doing exactly what it last year's th- on the table as well. Things could be off the table, yeah. right? As well, we just don't know yeah. where she's. And I don't. When are we gonna? Let's just think about this for a second. When are we gonna find out? So obviously, you're gonna find out on the Thursday before the meet. Wait, USA's. I don't know. It's, we, that's how all track is. We find out who's running races 24 hours beforehand. Yeah, I'm talking about being a little bit more. About whether or not she's specific. actually going to do the 400? Yeah. Do you think she'd need to run a 400 before USA's if she was running the 400? At out, 400 outdoors? I'm not, yeah, this is all outdoors. Okay. I'm not talking about indoors at all. Yeah. Okay. She, you know, she has to run a qualifying time. Okay, so we need, and then you think probably one more. But like, if you run one, you can chalk it up as like, oh, this is just a fun little practice. I think she. Yeah, but we'll at least know it's still a possibility by yeah. what mid-May. You think? Let's or, pick a date. That's what I'm saying. When is set a Google alert? When is the cutoff for this? May fifteenth. Actually, she may not need to run a qualifying time to get in the meet. Right, reigning champion. She That'd be so stupid though. Like I can't run one quarter lap, quarter mile. No, I know, I, I know. I'm just saying, what there's that rule exists, right? Or am I? I think that's for that? her own event. Okay, so to get in the quarter, she would need to qualify. But I'm sure they have a way because I know Alan Webb got into the 5K without having a 5K mark. It was like a thing because he had was a former know, US some some title clause where... like we just let you win because you're Alan Webb. Yeah, and everyone got mad because there was a, other people who couldn't get in. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Okay, I think by May... May 15th. May 15th, okay. okay. That's what it is. Uh, someone says, why is no one talking about Warholm running 45-3 in the 400 with ease? He jogged across the finish line. He'll run 44 if he feels like it. If you run 45-3 at a track meet named after you, did it really happen? No, I, I saw the video. It did. He looked good. Why are I we not talking about it? Because I honestly didn't know it happened. <laughs> well, we didn't have the Friday show. We didn't have Friday. Yeah, the show. Friday show, that'd have been like the first twenty minutes. That would have yeah. That and Thompson are Is is Warholm gonna run again? Is he running well, a, at, at a world indoor tour somewhere? Well, and he will run a forty four if he feels like it. Well that yeah. puts him in a gigantic group of people. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh Joel says, Is Gordon finally gonna agree that Texas is the number one women's team? Uh oh. No. Gordon's going to spreadsheets. No. no he's... Florida's still better. Yeah. Uh and Thomas says Sydney's four meter hurdle time would qualify her for this year's 400 at USA's. There you go. That'll be fun. Just, uh, she just gets her seat time. Her. <laughs> it's like, uh, it counts, right? Couldn't you submit a 400 meter hurdle time yeah. as a 400 time? I mean, they literally made a Sports Center commercial featuring her time. So yeah. it's not like everybody doesn't know the time. No, but like, technically, is it legal to submit a 400 meter hurdle result as a 400? I think you have to at least try, right? Here's my 5068. Yeah. What do you want to do with that? There you go. That'll be fun. I hope she does that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go to the college side of things. 
College time. It's right. now for the college segment. Gordon's, brought to you by college. college. Gordon's favorite segment. Uh, we made a reference to this earlier. Women 60, Julian Alfred in Albuquerque. You get a collegiate record. It's a very simple formula. Alfred plus Albuquerque equals NCAA record. 7.00. So lowered the mark. She's now all over the all-time list. It's basically Julian Alfred, Julian Alfred, Julian Alfred, Julian Alfred at the top of that all-time list. She's on a roll, Gordon. She is on an absolute roll right now. Yeah, sub-7 is in her sights. Uh, probably it's going to happen at NCAAs, I bet. Um, I don't think it will happen at Big 12s. I feel like they're going to probably be like more focus on just like getting through Big 12s than like peaking for Big 12s. I really think that we're going to see a sub seven, maybe even like, what's the world record? 92. No, we're not going to see that. We're not going to see 92. But we might see 96. I can yeah. see a 96. Yeah. 95, 96. We're definitely going to see a top 10 in the world ever in Albuquerque mid-March. I'll be there. Yeah. I'll interview her. I'll be like, hey, <laughs> what's with you in Albuquerque? Just love, hey, you love it here? Are you going to hey, move here? Are hey. you going to uh, buy a condo in Albuquerque and just break records after records in the, uh, the 60? 92 seems far, but also just because she went, went down to 100s, Right, which is a good chunk, but then she needs to go eight one hundreds. I mean, eight one hundreds is like this, but it is the NCAA championships, right? Yeah, you got to think she's not peaking for right now. No, and there's still another exactly. year to go. I think it's more a question of just can can she maximize the pressure and intensity that the NCAA indoor champs provides? Because we've seen a lot of athletes, right? They struggle with it. They're the favorite all year. They get there, and then something happens, and it goes sideways. But if you can harness it correctly, I think she can drop. I think 95 is a good number. I mean, I'll be interested to see what she does before then, but I think 695 is a, a good number. Um, also at that meet, more Texas news. Texas. Yeah. Rashida Adeleke. From Dublin, Ireland. Number three all time in the indoor quarter. So she's only behind Kendall Ellis and Sydney McLaughlin, 50.45. Now, she's a person maybe a lot of people don't know about, but she's been piling up fast times for a while now. Um, but 50.45 and only a tenth of a second now off of the collegiate record, that's, that's big. That's a big jump up. The comments on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, everyone was getting a thing Mo vibes watching this race. Very long stride. She kind of looks like a thing Mo in a way too, the way her form is. And people were like, whoa, is that a thing Mo out there? Because running 50.0, I mean 50 point mid indoors. <laughs> 50 point mid. Yeah, 50 point mid indoors. Very impressed. She's probably in line to be definitely running sub 50 when it comes to outdoors and it gives Texas an incredible one, two punch in their 400, because I believe they have the second fastest uh, runner right now in the 400 as well. Yes. Yeah, same race. Wasn't it? Who is Kennedy Simon yeah. in the same race. Yep, yep. Now there is a, someone named Talitha Diggs out there who currently has the third best time. And I imagine Diggs is going to respond with a 50 point herself, mm -hmm. uh, probably at, Clemson or SECs down the line. But even though Diggs is the heavy favorite, Adeleke, did I say right? Adeleke. Adeleke. She's going to be tough. She's going to be a tough challenge yeah. for Diggs. And I think that's going to be good because Adeleke is going to have to go faster to beat Diggs. And Diggs is going to have to stay fast to beat her. And it's just going to, they're both going to challenge her. It's going to remind me of 2018. You know what happened in 2018? I don't. Kendall Ellis versus Sydney McLaughlin. Oh. That was the record party in College Station. Yeah. And it was fun because they weren't in the same race. Right. Well, same meet, same. women's 200. 
Gabby Thomas and Ashley Henderson. I don't think yeah. won the same race. And then it was like so the four hundred works. It like it just it worked out that way where Cindy ran and then Kendall Lewis ran faster. Yeah. And so I think we could see a similar situation where, you know, Adelecki runs and then Diggs runs faster or vice versa. Mm -hmm. I think in this situation, Diggs is the Kendall Ellis, like this, the uh, the more established runner, and Adelecki is the Sydney more younger runner, even though they're both young, but, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I think that quarter, Britton Wilson could get in the mix too, right? Shoot, I forgot about her. Where's she at in the rankings? I don't think she's run a, a fast 400 yet. That's right. She's run long stuff, right? Yeah, she ran the six. Eight, eight and the six. But that's good. for. So Texas looking good. Uh, but, yeah. The, the uh, Texas Arkansas Florida has thing. really good runners. Florida has USC. It's going to be nuts. Women's quarter. Yeah. Keep an eye on it. All right. Distance side of things. The big news. Friday night. Yep. Uh, Washington women broke the collegiate record in the distance medley. Relay. I remember I got a text from Ryan Fenton, our colleague. He's like, hey, uh, do you know who's running? Is the DMR going to be good at BU? And then I saw the start list. And I was like, yeah, I mean, they got Washington and West Virginia. West Virginia has uh, Kayla McKay. But Washington, I don't know. They got Anna Gibson. She just ran 431 in a mile. They might be pretty good. And I was like, yeah, we might see a top, you know, five mark in the NCA this year type performance. No, we're going to see the fastest time ever. Uh, Mauricia Powell now breaks her own coaching DMR record. She <laughs> set the record when she was coaching the Oregon women. They break it by two seconds here, running 10.46.62 with Washington. Basically, uh, a solo effort for Anna Gibson on the anchor, but they did have you know some rabbit help through the 1,200. But overall, very impressive. Man, the DMR just keeps on getting faster and faster. You see 1046, 1059, 1101. Villanova still ran 1101. Kennesaw State ran 1105. There's times when 1105 was like top 10 in the in the country. Mm -hmm. Now it's getting fourth in a crazy BU race. So the team was Sophie O'Sullivan, Marlena Prey, Carly Thomas, and Anna Gibson. And yeah, the, the splits. splits, yeah, 316, 54, 2, 2019, and then 434, 2. That 2019. Is fast for a DMR by yourself. By yourself, three sixteen is good too. But that two hundred one nine, whoo, yeah. Carly Thomas is good, and I also think we may not see it, but I think there's teams out there that could match that. And NC State. We're not, you know, U.S. Sorry, USA's NCAA's altitude, so we probably won't see it there. But if there was a pen relays type setup yeah. in indoors where you had some of the best teams coming together, I think someone. We, Some other schools could break that. We need to get Washington to go to Penn Relays because throw together the guys they have with their 20 sub four milers and now seeing the women with the collegiate record holders in the DMR. The men and women of Washington could show up to Penn and like have a, a good battle with the NC States and the old misses of this world. Yeah. Rabbit, too. They had a rabbit in yeah. the, for the 1200. That's how you do it. It's all about the 1,200. If you get a good 1,200, you're going to run the collegiate record. <laughs> That's what every coach says. Like, yeah, we would run the collegiate record. We just need a good 1,200 rabbit. Do you know that would be the Go ahead. business idea? All right. 1,200rabbits.com, where we offer our 1,200 rabbit services to all the college coaches <laughs> every February, every year. I think a website named 1200rabbits.com <laughs> might lead people to a different conclusion about what's on that website. What? They're, oh, I see. They're going to yeah. think they're going to get to buy 1200 rabbits. But who's buying 1200 rabbits? I don't know. That's, that's what we don't want to know. We don't want to know who's buying 1200. Would you rather have 1200 rabbits or 1200 rabbit? Maybe I call 1200rabbit.com. Yeah. Still, I don't think people are going to think of it. They're going to think that S, the omission of the S. Was I'm going to Google 1200 rabbits. Dot com. URL is available. All right. Should I buy it on GoDaddy? I mean, Eric Sawinski. This is what he should be doing too, right? Yeah. Well, Eric's like 800 rabbit. I know, but he could do an 800. At, That's going to be competition. Pace. I don't, I don't, I think Eric, we're going to try to, Eric Sawinski's our competition in this. The, oh, the, you're trying the game to get, to get the market. You. I'm trying to get the full market share of rabbiting. And so 1200rabbits.com. Gotcha. 
follow me on 12 under, 12 under rabbits i'm gonna start my own um youtube social media instagram launch yeah. coming soon uh what else patreon oh oh speaking of relays the this is a segment we do with the underrated performance oh yeah of the week what was it this one let's show it let's show the last half of this race nico arkansas men they ran out of their mind man they had a good competition in texas a&m and usc but arkansas we know their anchor christopher bailey who uh ran that 45 low earlier this year they got aiden owens the the decathlete throwing down impressive four by four splits you see this screen here that's their decathlete running the third leg but they run 301 301 man number number two all time ever in collegiate history very impressed and the thing that makes it impressive is they're doing this with not like a bunch of like 44 second open 400 guys like they really only have one true like maybe one or two true 400 meter runners but they're just taking guys and putting them together and and running 301 indoors because the team that has the best 4x4 squad is Florida because they got the transfers that came in they have basically four guys who can all split 43 high on a good day yeah whereas Arkansas probably only has like one guy who can split 43 high this guy Christopher Bailey you see on your screen here but if Arkansas can run 301 with what they have man NCAA final is going to be wild because when Florida puts it all together Georgia with bowling and Godwin, like it's going to be hot. Uh, SEC four by four sometimes doesn't always produce because a lot of teams kind of, you know, wave the white flag to save it for NCAAs. But seeing Arkansas run 301, very impressed. With good competition, but there's definitely some room there for them to be pushed even more. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I like the whole dynamic of the four by four where it's a bunch of people coming together from. From different events, yeah. right? Connor Washington, who was on this relay, shorter sprinter. Yeah, he's a Georgia guy. Right, exactly. And then you, you already talked about um, Owens coming over from the the multis. So Benson and Bailey, you'd say they're pure 400-meter guys, but half their team coming from other events yeah. and putting together the, the second fastest time in NCAA history. It's pretty cool. Owens was hyped for that. It should be. And I mean, te- Texas also could put together a really good team. They got Jonathan Jones. Like, they got some guys as well. So, man, four by four. It's going to be fun. Four teams that can win it, you think? Yeah. Four right. different four by four teams for the win. All right. Also, underrated performance of the week. Mm-hmm. That was number one. Number two, underrated performance of the week was the NFL Pro Bowl. <laughs> Definitely not underrated. Our boy, Kyle Jusek. Juszczyk. Use, use Juszczyk. Use there you go. Close enough. I didn't know this, but he was a thrower in high school mm-hmm. oh, out of Ohio. <laughs> and he scored two touchdowns in the flag football game. Yeah. And first touchdown, he did a shot put with the ball. Second touchdown, he did a discus throw with the ball. What did you think of his form? Uh, did he do the uh, throwing community proud? I mean, uh, yeah. Not only did he do the throwing community, this was probably the best part of the entire game. Oh, yeah. Based, I didn't watch it, but from what I heard, <laughs> this is the best part of the entire game. And he threw, I looked him up, 54 feet in the shot in, in high school. That's pretty good. Good rotation there, right? He's spinning. He's not just he's not gliding. He's spinning. Um, now, with the discus, it's hard to fling a football due to the weight and shape of it yeah, versus it's... the discus. So I thought he did did well, all things considered. He kind of just chucks it, but look at the the rotation and the release, and he's watching it. I mean, I feel like I'm in a track stadium. Yeah. Ryan watching. Krauser would be proud. I think it's pretty good. And he's doing both. He's not just doing one throwing yeah. event. He's doing both. I mean, if he scored again, would he have I mean, he's, hammer, what, what, javelin? What was left? I mean, he said he, he did high jump in high school as well. He, he high jumped 5'3". I'm not sure. It's not that high, but, you know, he's a thrower. So. Yeah, he's a thrower and a... NFL fullback. So that's pretty damn good. <laughs> for, for high jump. I mean, um, he high jumped 5'3 and got seventh place at the Kimberly Relays. 
All right. In April of 2009. I mean, 54, 54 feet in the shot for a high schooler is, is pretty good, yes, right? Sure. It's not, again, it's not. It was 54 time. seven. It was 54 and a half feet. Yeah, yeah. That'll, you'll be the best thrower at a lot of schools if you're throwing that. So. 150 feet in the disc. Well, really, 151. Yeah. Well know. done. Well done, uh, Kyle Yuschek. Let's see you. This uh, track and field podcast salutes you. We appreciate you giving love to. No, we do. We try to do it like a real men of genius. Here's to you, Kyle. I, I just feel like we need to recognize this sort of stuff. Yeah. We need to show that we we appreciate it. Also, you should need to thank the Philadelphia Eagles because we get this because the Eagles beat the Niners, oh, gosh, and that's why stop, he's in this stop, game. Stop, stop, stop. Let's go, Birds. Stop. I'm going to be obnoxious all week. How will that be different than no, the other week? No, I have a podcast, and the Eagles win. Ooh, that Monday podcast is going to be fire. What happens if the opposite? happens what's it gonna be like next? oh we saw what happens when the sixers lose and i have to do a podcast right after that i don't think you'll be as mad will you the eagles lose i will be very upset really yeah it's not easy to make the super bowl sixers level except mad no 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 i won't be as bad no because the sixers Sixers, i put a lot of my my emotional health and they lost in the most torturous way and like dumbest way yeah and it, it took a week for it to happen yeah that's the thing but super bowl it's only like three hours if you lose on the field goal i get it it'll suck but i feel like the next morning you're not going to be inconsolable yeah like you were like we were all scared of you after the sixers game there was a solid week it was because it was, you invested a lot in that i know I put my blood sweat and tears yeah well hopefully kansas city wins so and that's what because that's what your son wants that's what we're all cheering for here well and i think everybody We'll get more. No, not a, people, people will listen people more like if you Philly. lose. People like Philly. People will people listen. People aren't Patrick Mahomes. They aren't fans of Kermit the Frog voice, wow, man. Come wow, on. Wow, wow, wow. Come on. People will listen more if you lose. People, want, to people you want, lose. want Devin Allen to have a Super Bowl ring. True. They feel bad about the false Is he start. Is going to play? Not yet. There's not an injury yet. Okay. There has not been an injury. So still, he's on the side. Still he, waiting on the he injury. He'd get a ring, though. He's going to get a ring. He'd get a ring if they win. Would you, t- if he, if. We told Devin Allen right when he got disqualified from the 110 hurdle the final that you're going to be in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Would he have been like, that's cool. That's, would, he been, would he have been like, all right, I'll take that trade? Do you think if I told him like, hey, what would you rather have? Win the world title? Or if we told him two years ago, mm-hmm. would you rather win the Super Bowl or win a, a world title in the 110 hurdles? What do you think he would have I said? I think if he was playing, it would be but, different. Not playing. But we, we, he's we don't. He wants I know. Yeah, you know, he's not playing and stuff. Safe, but like, he probably would have said Super Bowl. Right. If he was, I, I think not. If he's on the practice squad, yeah. I think he would rather have. Well, that. he's on the practice squad this year, and I think the reason why is, you know, people are kind of like you need a year to kind of relearn football, and so next year I think he's going to be starting somewhere. Yeah, but there's no guarantee. Oh, somewhere, not necessarily the Eagles. Not yeah. It'll be the Eagles or somewhere else. Well, those are the two options. Yeah. yeah. I think teams will like, all right, he stayed on the practice squad for a full year. He now has a whole year of learning the NFL playbook yeah. terminology. It's not college Oregon football anymore. He'll, I think 2023 he'll be this is, scoring. He'll score. I will say he'll score at least three touchdowns next year. This is why I have no choice but to root against them because they're not moving him up. But you're an Oregon guy. Yeah, but they're not moving him up. Why would they move him up? For A.J. Brown or – Devontae Smith? Because they on. care about track, like Kyle Juszczyk cares about track. Yeah, but look where he's He's on the Pro Bowl. He's not in the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, that's because he didn't have a quarterback. So, I just think more people will listen on Monday. Wow, you almost knocked a Coke over your laptop. That would have been really bad, too. More people will listen on Monday because if, if the Eagles lose. Because lose, they'll want to hear you deal with it in real time. They want the shot in Ford, yeah? <laughs> yes, I know what that word means. Uh-huh. Whoa, I didn't even say anything. You, you were thinking defensive. it, though. Look. Our viewer count dropped by 50 as soon as we started talking about the Super Bowl. No, we're good. We're still at the same thing. Uh, any questions uh, in the chat? Let's see. Now we're all in Devin Allen stuff. Um, oh, all in the game says Olympic World Champion Shawnee miller Weibo and World Medalist Marcelo Weibo will have a baby. I did see that. Congrats. Yeah. Them. Now that means the whole – because she was going to what event? She was going to do the Maltese? And the two. Yeah. Yeah, that's now probably not happening. Well, I'm just going to wait till. After she has a kid, and then sure reevaluate, reassess. Yeah, but that's exciting. Oh yeah, no, congrats. Yeah, good for them. Their their kid is going to be very talented. Who do, who would you take? Uh, this future child, or a future eaten baby? 
depends on the event, I guess. Well, uh, in in a in a multi. Oh, in a multi? Yeah, it's that's tough. I don't know. The uh, the the Weibo baby would have a little more speed, mm-hmm. I would feel, because they got Shiny Miller Weibo blood. But the uh, Eaton baby would have just an all around talent because well, it's multi- two multis, two yeah, multis, multis. multis as opposed to multi plus sprint. Yeah. AJT says, apparently, according to Otto Bolden, Michael Norman is planning on stepping down to the 100 this season. Thoughts? Uh, I did see this. Like, for real stepping down? Like, I'm doing it or that just, like, unclear. doing some fun little 100-meter races? I, mean, I thought la- before last year, you know, coming off the struggles of the year before, he might go to the 2. But the 2 is so hard. Yeah. And then a 100 is – I know he has that 9.8. And ran, he's, he can be competitive. But he's the world champion now in the four. I low key think Fred Curley might do a one four double. He did a. There is a um, a tweet he posted last week. He's like, "What's the hardest uh, double out there?" I think he might do a one four. Did you look at the schedule? Because he's going to skip the two. Because it's like I'm not messing with Lyles and Kenny B and Knighton, and, and he's riced them. Then he kind of knows, like, all right, that's their that's their cup of tea, but. I think Curly like looks at Norman. It's like, hey, I beat Norman when I was in a when I was in it in 2017, 18, 19. So why not win the one four double? But you didn't. You didn't. You don't know if that's possible. I mean, anything's possible. It's Fred Curly. No, I mean the it's with the schedule. Let me look it could still be possible. They don't run them at the exact same time. I'm just seeing if they overlap. Mm, They're not gonna overlap. They do kind of overlap. How much? Day two. 400 round one. Okay. And then that night is the 100. So he'd have to run a four. Yeah. So he'd really only need to run a 400 the morning of when you have the 100 semis and the 100 final. That's fine. Get your legs warm up. And then you have, let's see, he'd have, how many days off would he have before the semis? That's really weird. We're back to schedule talk. You're the I one thought who we were it done up. with this. I thought we were done with analyzing. You're the one who brought Track it up. Track meet schedules. Oh, okay. So you have and then he'd have a day. Th- so he'd have day day three would be, day two. He'd run the 400 first round in the morning, and then he'd run the 100 semi and final at night. Yeah, and then day three, fine. day three he'd have off, and then day four he'd have the 400 semi, and then day five he'd have the 400. Or sorry, day six he'd have the 400 final. So he'd have another day off there. Yeah. So that's that's doable. I mean, that would not, be fun. Not ideal. But it'll be fun. Yeah, it'd be like Stefan Hassan skipping yeah. the skipping an event. Yeah. What you call it a skip event double. I don't know what it'd be called. So the Cur Lubble. <laughs> double cur, and cur curly. Dub, cur double? Yeah, or the doubly. The dub, dor, dorbly. <laughs> doubly. Oh right. man. I mean I I would I would want to see I think Norman still obviously can he was running some quick times in the in the quarter last year. It didn't happen at at Worlds, but he got the gold, so who cares? I just think his PR can go under forty three, forty five, and uh, so I, I kind of want to see him stick. With, it's a rare time when I want to see someone stick with the event that they're already at. So, all right, that's it. The one other thing. No, nope, sorry, that's not it. One other thing, guys. You see the pole vault. Mondo. No, not Mondo. <laughs> Potential maybe Mondo Challenger. Mondo Challenger. Tell us more, Gordon. You see it? You talking about uh, Gutterm- Gutterson? Yeah. Sandre? Yeah. He uh, vaulted 5.9 meters at the New Mexico Collegiate Classic. I mean, I guess it's not 6.2. We're still 30 centimeters away. But, yeah. like, hey, a 5.9 this early in the season in college, like, that's – that's pretty impressive. That's like what Mondo was doing. Like, that's Mondo esque type performances to yeah. jump that high, to vault that high. Not saying he's going to challenge Mondo, but I just think it's it would it would be so weird for us to have a decade of Mondo and it just no one ever even being near. I him. I think someone's going to eventually be near him. That's just the reality. Maybe, maybe it's this guy. Yeah, maybe it is. But I think it's going to be somebody. The event's not going to stay completely static for that long. And the question is, is he going to drop a little bit and let people come back to him, or is someone going to rise to the occasion? I think someone's going to get there. The thing that would make it fun, if it is Sandre uh, Gudersman, he's from Norway. Yeah, a little Norway-Sweden rivalry. Norway-Sweden rivalry. And if he becomes like – Both went to college in the U.S., though. If he becomes like 
a real challenger, then Norway has a has a new big three. That's right. The old Warholm, Ingebrigtsen, Guttermsen trifecta. That's like a that's a legit big three. Yeah. Like they go. would be the headline on all the yeah, what's Sweden's big three? You know, that's what you got to ask. That's That'll be out on the billboard. What's Sweden's big three? Big three, big who? Big one, yeah. Big three is better than big one, yeah. David does bring up a good point. Bobka did it. I guess Bobka did just completely dominate over the event for a really long time and no one ever yeah. caught up. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about like more in the current era, whenever we think someone's out there, and in any event, not just the pole vault, someone always seems to come up and match. Although Mondo's in now a category of, of his own same thing with sydney so who knows um let's see yeah all in the game says four men over 590 this early is insane uh thomas says you need to say 590 gordon not 59 okay thomas are you, are you said, just gonna read anything no here's one of crit criticizing me uh he's not gonna run three races in one day kevin maybe he will let's have fun Why yeah not? thank you you're on the team fun now I've always been on Team Fun. No, you haven't. I've always been on Team Kevin, Fun. Kevin, you're always like, Gordon, stop. Don't no, talk that way. No, because some of your ideas are stupid. That's that's anti-fun. No. You call anti-fun. Your, no, your word for anti-fun is stupid. Well, because some of them are bad. Or bad. Again, I don't th – like, if I had to bet, I wouldn't say he's going to do it. But just like – just because he can't run three races in one day, sure, why not? I mean, he'll figure that out. Yeah, but as fans, we could say, hey, that'd be cool if you did do that. Just like – 2019, Savannah's on. We're looking at the schedule. Hey, what about 15 and 10? Let's do that. All right. Before we leave, let's take... Oh, we didn't even talk about the London Marathon Women's Field. What about a Wednesday, I guess? That was going to be the big thing on Friday. Yeah. Savannah's on making her marathon debut. I got all mixed up because of the cancellation of the show on Friday. But we'll yeah. do that on Wednesday. So, uh, Wednesday is also, though, the Torin meet. Yeah. In Poland. Excited? So, it goes live at 11 a.m., so we'll do a live recap to that meet awesome. on the pod. And then we'll also then Friday, we'll get ready for our big over-unders because Friday and Saturday, it's a wild weekend. We're going to have BU Valentine invite, which a lot of people are going. I hear potentially Parker Valby will be there. That'll be fun. Kirby invite. We see what people are doing in New Mexico already. That'll be the big one. And then there's even more World Indoor Tours and also – We'll preview Milrose games, which is on Saturday. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a fun weekend of track. I, I honestly think this upcoming weekend is the best weekend of track and field the entire year, every year. You can bait <laughs> me on that tomorrow. On Wednesday. I mean, no, but that's okay. There's you don't lot. think it is? I mean, Milrose is cool. Levan, like, Levan so much is happen another, so much, another week, though, right? I know, but so much happens the uh, mid-February weekend in track. It's just like chaos. I don't know. Not the, like, cause a diamond league just, is, there's just the diamond league that day and that's it. All right, cool. You have a really good diamond league day, but like, that's all you had. Here you have this happening in California and Oregon and Texas and Arkansas and Florida. It's just like all over. Mm -hmm. It's just nonstop. You don't know how to keep track of all the things. Your Twitter feeds like, New world lead up. Oh, nope. New NCA lead up. Oh, top 10. Nope. Now that's 25th. It's we'll, fun. We'll keep track. We'll see. We'll take notes. We'll give it a See, scale. this is you being anti fun again. One to 10. No, I just think other weeks are more fun. Jamaican champs and US champs. In the same weekend. That's, that's two meets. But yeah. no, no, hold on. USA is like spread out over four different days. I'm talking about one day. So which day? You think Saturday. Sa okay, so call your shot. You think Saturday? It'll be the greatest day of 2023. Yeah, we're getting it out of the way. We're getting the best day first. Okay, this is, this is actually fun to keep track of. If, right. you're, if you're right, I will admit it. Okay, so every day. Well, it's indoors, though. I just feel like there's a cap because it's indoors. No, there's no cap. There's a cap. No cap. February 11th, 2023 will be the best day of track overall. Yes. It's not going to have a Sydney McLaughlin world record 400 meter hurdle. I get that. But the sum of its parts will be the best day of the year. We'll see. Because it has to happen in one day. It can't be over a long week like Worlds. One day. Okay. We'll leave it there. I could go on on that one for a while, but I'm not going to. Thanks to Nico for producing. Yes, thank you, Nico. Like and subscribe. Um, and follow the Rights of Ricky Sanchez podcast, <laughs> the Only Sixers podcast. 
little known show out there. Forever associated. Just a big day. He was the internet provider for episode 594. The look on the one guy's face.